Welcome everyone and thank you for participating in our virtual webinar today. Our topic is lose, gain, maintain, weight matters. If you are viewing our discussion live through Facebook, please feel free to ask questions throughout the program or at the end through the comment section below this video. If you are viewing our discussion at a later date, you are welcome to email your questions to provide to the provided email found within the comment section, as well as within our slides at the end of our presentation. Our program today will be offered by Massey Cancer Center's outpatient oncology dietitian, Samantha Diamond, and myself, Allie Farley. Samantha is a clinical dietitian who has been working with Massey Cancer Center for two years now and offers her services within Massey Clinics downtown, Stony Point, and Hanover. Samantha completes one-on-one -on -one consultations with patients. I am also a clinical dietitian and have been working with Massey Cancer Center for three, almost four years, three and a half to four years within the integrative health program. I am not in the clinic like Samantha, but working within the community, offering nutrition education through programs like the one we're offering you all today. So let's get started. What we're going to talk about today is why does weight matter? Well, Samantha's going to review unintentional weight loss and how it can lead to malnutrition. I'm going to talk about unintentional weight gain and how it may lead to other serious health conditions, as well as intentional weight loss and obtaining a healthy weight status and why that may be beneficial for some, but not everyone. And then Samantha will finish up our talk today talking about maintaining weight and building strength and how we can get, have this done or accomplish this by working with our care team. All right, guys. So usually in the setting of cancer, there's a few possible causes of unintentional weight loss. Some of those causes might be symptoms associated with the cancer or the cancer treatment that limits your intake of food and drinks. And sometimes that could actually be because the tumor is using more energy causing you to need more calories and protein to maintain your weight, or even in some cases, the tumor is causing you to not absorb nutrients quite well. We, why we want to prevent unintentional weight loss is that when you lose a lot of weight, you become what we call malnourished. When you become malnourished, unfortunately, that impairs your immune function. So that might make your white blood cells drop. It can cause poor performance status. So you may have difficulty completing your day-to-day -day task. You may lose your muscle mass, which makes you feel weaker during treatment. You have decreased quality of life, a little bit more fatigue from losing all that weight and not having energy. And it can even affect your wound healing and your ability to get treatment. Some causes of your unintentional weight gain is what Allie's gonna go over next. So unintentional weight gain does happen. Um, Samantha talked very detailed about that unintentional weight loss, but we do have that other group of individuals that may have some weight gain. Some possible causes of unintentional weight gain can be a variety of different things. We do typically see unintentional weight gain more often in some specific types of cancers. For instance, breast cancer, um, uh, uh, prostate cancer, um, and a couple other ones. But those are the typical ones that we might see some weight gain in. This may be due to different things such as chemotherapy, which can lead to excess, which can sometimes cause or lead to excess fluid and resulting in edema, as well as causing fatigue, which could result in to decreased physical activity or even causing nausea, which a lot of times when people have um, nausea or are nauseous, they may actually eat a little bit more to subside that nausea or improve that, that feeling. We can also have triggers of intense food cravings or poor dietary choices. Sometimes with chemotherapy, we'll see individuals have a decrease in their metabolism, which is the rate that our body uses those calories and energy. While also, um, we also see causes of mental menopause happening earlier in women, which can decrease your metabolism as well. Additionally, stress. A lot of times um, with a diagnosis of cancer and going through treatment, we have emotional, physical, mental stress, which can cause uh, poor dietary choices and increased or unintentional weight gain. Some, some of the reasons on why we want to prevent unintentional weight loss 
First of all, it's important to note that an increase in weight over time might also suggest a serious health conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, or cardiovascular disease. So having that unintentional weight loss is not good for our overall health. Um, we know that there is a link between obesity and cancer. There are actually 12 cancers that are linked to being overweight or obese. So making sure that we don't have that unintentional weight gain before, during, and after treatment may decrease our chances of having a reoccurrence or developing cancer in general. Um, a possible increase of inflammation, being overweight or obese may cause some inflammation throughout our body. Um, loss of muscle mass and making you feel weaker. Just because you're overweight or obese doesn't mean you're nourished. You may be malnourished in some of your nutrients, which can cause the loss of muscle mass, as well as increased fatigue, resulting again in decreased physical activity and inability to kind of work those, that energy and burn your calories. Intentional, intentional weight loss. Well, first of all, it's important to know, to acknowledge that maintaining and attaining a healthy weight is important. So for many people, this means avoiding weight loss as Samantha mentioned by getting enough calories and nutrition every day. And for people who perhaps are obese, this may mean losing weight. You wanna ask your healthcare team if you should try to lose weight during treatment. However, it may be better to wait until after treatment so that you have the nutrition you need to stay strong. If you do try to lose weight during treatment, it should be moderate and working with a dietitian is ideal. Not everyone should lose weight during cancer treatment. It is very kind of dependent on the type of cancer you have or the type of treatment you're going through too. Some treatments, um, increase your energy needs. So it's important that we don't have a, a significant weight loss during that time. My key note on this one is if you're wanting intentional weight loss or controlled weight loss is probably the better term for that. Talk to your care team. When you're starting to become malnourished or you're not getting enough calories, it's really important that you try to increase your total caloric and protein intake to help you keep your weight stable. There's quite a few cancers where weight loss just isn't indicated regardless of your obesity, just because there is a pretty big chance that you're gonna lose weight during your treatment. Some ways you can maintain that good nutrition is by eating frequently. Generally, when our patients are having some poor appetite or a lot of symptoms, it's sometimes easier to eat six to eight small meals every two or three hours or so. Try and keep that nutrition up and keep that weight stable. Some ways you can increase those calories is by adding extra fat to your meals if you're not feeling nauseous. Doing things like nutrition supplements, like Ensure or Boost or Carnation, any of those are fine. Trying to add extra things into your meals, like if you have a sandwich, instead of eating the whole sandwich, if your appetite's not there, maybe eat half at one meal, half at another. Eating things like frequent snacks, like nuts that are easy to grab or some nab crackers can be an easy way to add your calories in. Trying to be active can also help. I know it sounds counterintuitive. You might be really tired from your cancer treatment, but the more you move, the more your appetite's gonna increase. It can actually help a little bit with bowel regularity as well, which can happen, can change a little bit when you're going through treatment. Staying hydrated could help. So a lot of times when people are really dehydrated, they get very, very fatigued. That fatigue can make you not want to move. Maybe you won't want to get up and get a snack or get a meal. So keeping that hydration up can be extra important in helping you not only stay hydrated, but keep your nutrition up overall. If you're really having a difficult time maintaining your weight, or you really can't get enough food in, it's really important that you talk to your care team. So hopefully you can meet with us 101 to try and get ahead of it before it becomes a problem. So we can make sure you can get all the treatment that you need and you don't have to pause. Sometimes when you don't eat enough and you lose a lot of weight, your weight goes down, your counts change, your blood levels change, and it makes it difficult for the team to treat you without putting you at higher risk. So it's super important that you work hard to keep that weight maintained if you're supposed to, so that we can keep you going through treatment and hopefully get rid of your cancer. Absolutely. And I hope that everyone got a lot of information out of what both Samantha and I 
had to say today. I do want to share that we have some wonderful resources, though, through Massey to um, research and look through and attain some more knowledge in regards to nutrition and cancer. Within Massey's webpage, we have a diet and nutrition um, site where we have a lot of blogs regarding nutrition in general, as well as nutrition and cancer, a lot of recipes, all of our current and future nutrition related programs are also listed within that resource. If you have any questions about the outreach nutrition programs that we have to offer or any of the information, provided throughout that resource that I mentioned online, please feel free to email me at the email listed within this slide, aline.farley at bcuhealth.org. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling, Samantha is one of our dietitians um, through Massey that can definitely help you out with this. Make sure you talk to your care team and ask your care team for a nutrition referral or nutrition consult. Samantha, do you have another suggestion on that one or any other thoughts on how to get a uh, one-on-one -on -one counseling? Absolutely. Don't be afraid to ask your care team. And if you don't have, say you forget to ask a doctor's appointment, you guys can always call Massey directly. And the team there can let us know if you're looking to meet with us one-on-one -on -one for nutrition. Great, and these are our references that we use to collaborate on all the information that we've provided for you all today. If you're interested in any of the information in regards to the PowerPoint presentation or these references, I'm happy to email those to you. So feel free again to email me at that address I mentioned just a moment ago, and which can also be found within the comment section. I believe we actually have a few questions already, Samantha, if we wanna Go ahead and start addressing some of them. Absolutely. So one of our questions was, what do you recommend for anyone experiencing taste changes or lack of taste? So this is fairly common, especially with chemotherapies that can cause some taste change. Generally, adding some extra spices to your meal can help with this. If you're noticing your foods tasting a little bland, as long as you don't have high blood pressure, it may be helpful to add a little extra salt to your meals, a little pepper if you're not having any mouth sores, Feel free to liberalize a little bit with things like garlic powder or onion powder that can make things taste better. Adding tart flavors can sometimes help as well. So things like extra lemon or a little bit of vinegar on your food might actually come through some of that bland taste change. Allie, do you have suggestions for maybe some metallic taste change for these people? So I really encourage you to, as, as Samantha just mentioned, kind of really concentrating on a lot of those types of things with your spices and your seasonings and the tart flavors. If you're having some metallic changes, um, think about more of maybe even some of those foods that you've been able to tolerate in the past that might be a little bit more bland, or if you're wanting to um, try to use some foods that are more room temperature, that might help a little bit as well. Think about things that aren't really hot or really cold, that might be helpful helpful additionally. Um, if you're trying to, if you're getting metallic taste with things that you're drinking or things like that, try using a straw or try not using metal spoons. Um, maybe a plastic spoon might help as well. And think about what, not only what you're eating, but the types of utensils that you're using. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Some patients do experience overly sweet foods. So mm -hmm. things that normally weren't super sweet taste a little sweeter. If that's the case, feel free to kind of limit these foods. You don't always have to include them or even add some salt to those foods to kind of cut through some of that sweetness and make things a little more palatable. Absolutely. I think, I think a, I'm sorry. I, one other thing I would kind of think about too, when we're thinking about um, taste changes and smell changes, sometimes thinking about your environment and um, maybe not being in a closed environment if some type of smell really bothers you really bad. Think about um, right now with the weather's getting a little bit better, you know, open those windows, kind of give yourself a, a fresh environment. Sometimes that will help with your, your smell and taste smell and, and make things a little bit more tolerable as well. Absolutely. Try to, if you're noticing you're having some smell sensitivity, definitely avoid where foods are being cooked if you can, especially the caregiver who can help you cook food separately. All right, looks like we have another question here. Do you have any advice for someone dealing with nausea? So that actually ties in pretty well to what we were talking about with some of those taste and smell sensitivities. 
a lot of people with nausea will tell us that they start to experience smell sensitivity where they don't like being in the room when things are being cooked or they can't handle hot foods. So sometimes those hot foods actually give off more of a scent. So choosing cold foods, like Ali was saying before, or foods that are more room temperature can help you tolerate food a little bit better because you won't have to smell it. Same thing with nutrition supplements. I've had quite a few patients tell me that when they open the nutrition supplement, the smell turns them off when they're nauseous. Sometimes pouring those into enclosed containers so you can't smell them as easily and using a straw or a container with a really small opening can help you palate those a little more. All right, can you recommend foods for patients with mouth sores or painful swallowing? Absolutely. So usually when people are having mouth sores, your mouth is gonna be extremely sensitive to anything that's acidic, anything that's spicy or rough. So usually we'll tell people to go more towards that bland diet, you know, choose things that don't have a lot of seasoning on them. Try to avoid things that have pepper or have cayenne or anything kind of spicy on it because that could really irritate your mouth. And try to limit things like fruits that have more of an acid medium. So generally things like lemons, limes, and tomatoes are pretty acidic and can really hurt your mouth when you're having mouth sores. But choosing things like melons or bananas or peaches can actually be better tolerated and still give you some of that sweet flavor that you might want. You could also use those oral nutrition supplements like the Insure Boost or Carnation, or even making milkshakes at home. I know there's a lot of fear about sugar and cancer, but sugar doesn't directly feed cancer. It can definitely be helpful in helping increase your calories and protein. Absolutely, and also when you're having um, mouth sores or difficulty swallowing, keep in mind that those foods that maybe are really easy to chew and swallow too. So more of your soft foods might be a little bit more tolerable um, during some occurrences. So think about those things that might be not take a lot of chewing and might easily be swallowed and not be as harmful on your throat like Sam had mentioned. Sure, definitely things like egg salad or tuna salad and chicken salad are all really great options for high protein and high calorie soft foods. Mm -hmm. Same thing with even congee, which is kind of a broth and rice mixture can be a really easy way to get some more calories in. All right, Allie, I think that's all of our questions for today. If anyone has any additional questions, like I mentioned before, please feel free to email me at aline.farley at vcuhealth.org. And if I need to, I can also consult out with Samantha and she can help with that, any other questions or concerns as well. Thank you all so much for participating today.